Hello, today we will talk about jewelry of 1960 to 1980s. In jewelry, this epitomized by Andrew Grima of London, who discovered endless ways of texturing metal, molding it into bold and daring shapes and setting it it with large surfaces of uncut crystals, or gemstones chosen for their chromatic interest more than for the economic value. Bicolored tourmalines, opals, agates, opal boulders, baroque pearls, sapphires and moonstones, cut and cabochon, lapis lazuli, citrines, all embellished with sprinkles of small diamonds, tiaras and hair ornaments. The advent of the 1960s marked the final disappearance of tiaras from the design books of the jewelers. With very few exceptions, all tiaras worn after this de- date were the product of the previous decades of the 19th century, and since the increasingly rare occasions that still required them tend to be formal, weddings or state-related, the lack of contemporary, modern and up-to-date designs for this type of ornament did not really matter. And the 1960s progressed so the 1950s use of adoring evening hairstyles with gem set clips and brooches disappeared completely, together with the elaborate piled up coffers of the decade. Necklaces. In the 1960s, the most popular and wearable necklaces tended to be short, sitting just at the base of the neck in bands of differently worked gold, occasionally embellished with diamonds, colored or precious stones. Another variation of this was a simple rigid metal band encircling the neck and supporting a large pendant of abstract design set with small diamonds or with a large semi-precious gem within a border of spiky gold work. Slabs of agate, crystal aggregates and baroque pearls were among the favorite materials decorating the front of such colors. More elaborate and expensive examples often assumed the shape of short colors pointed or enlarged at the front to form of the short beep motif. Set with the diamonds, preferably marquees or pear-shaped, alone or combined with precious colored stones in a regiment of stylized leaf and flower head motifs. The overall effect was always that of an extremely dynamic jewel. Irregular outlines and stones set in prongs on different planes to achieve a feeling of depth and volume. The diamond supremacy of the 1950s gave way to a wide use of rubies, sapphires and emeralds, in combination with diamonds. Turquoises were introduced in high jewelry in the 1960s, and their rich and distinctive color was exploited in combination with diamonds in many necklaces of this type. Brushes. Brushes were popular in the 1960s and were very often sold and sewed with earrings of matching design. Among the favorite designs were stylized a sun or starburst motifs made of textured metal set at random with small diamonds or with a large semi-precious gemstone at the center. Clusters of geometric metal shapes combined with step-cut aquamarines or citrines, cabochons of hard or semi-precious stones enveloped with gold sprawling root motifs. Uh, jagged broken plugs of metal highlighted with gemstones or contrasting colors. They all share in common broken outlines, three-dimensional qualities and textured surfaces of metal contrasting with polished gemstones. The interest in natural materials and work by hand prompted the production of many brooches of abstract design set with gemstones, crystals, or aggregates of crystals, such as amethyst, dioptas, or emerald, within asymmetrical clusters of geometrical metal forms. Very popular too in this period and in the first half of 1970s were brooches mounted with circular shell-like nodules of chalcedony, encrusted with minute crystalline growth of quartz, embellished with brilliant cut diamonds or pearls. Pendant. 1960s fashion for short necklaces didn't seem to favor pendants, especially in the field of precious jewelry. At times, the spiky diamond ribbons which encircled the neck were provided with detachable pendants of informal cluster design, often set at the center with a large colored stone or large diamond within a jagged border of uh, pear-shaped smaller stones. On the other hand, the most innovative designers of the decade, who were more interested in the final effect rather than the intrinsic value, liked to suspend from plain gold ribbons pendants of various abstract shapes made of textured gold embellished with small diamonds, or set with natural crystals or hard stone encaged in gold ore. And this is about it for today. Stay tuned.